Before the time when Conan was known as a great warrior who battled the executive douchebags by leaving The Tonight Show so its glorious legacy could be preserved. P.S. You got balls? There was another Conan, played by then relative newcomer Arnold Schwarzenegger. I am the Nostalgia Critic, doing a parody of the great and powerful Mako! Who stars alongside Arnold in these films? It is a time of high adventure, swords and sorcery, and great epic silliness! This is the Conan Movies! Large in scale, small on intelligence, the Conan movies were based off of the great stories written by Robert E. Howard. But from what I understand, they have almost nothing to do with these movies, so we will instead look at the films themselves. They are films before one-liners, before great explosions, and before dental work could fix that great big gap in between your teeth. Prepare yourselves for phenomenal goofiness! Okay, I'm not gonna do that impression the whole time. But we are gonna take a look at these movies. And our first film, Conan the Barbarian, starts off, oddly enough, with a Frederick Nietzsche quote. Well, give him credit. I'm certainly gonna be telling myself that while watching this movie. Between the time when the ocean... Made that joke already. Next! So we start off with Arnold Schwarzenegger as a little child. No, no, no! no, not that child! As his father gives him some helpful advice. No one in this world can you trust. Not men, not women, not beasts. This you can trust. Yeah, how about if your village is attacked by savage killers who outnumber you greatly and are so blood hungry that even their dogs are dressed up in armor? Your trusty sword wouldn't do much there, would it? Maybe you should have considered that strength in numbers strategy. We are the knight who So as Conan's father is killed and the knights play whack a villager, his smoking hot mother tries to protect him from the evil James Earl Jones. When you put it like that... So it looks like he's gonna leave her alone and let her fight another day. Psych! Oh, Hitler! Yes, I enjoyed taking a long time killing that person for no particular reason. I sure hope her son doesn't build up a vengeful rage and dedicate his life to destroying me while also working out his gigantically large pectoral muscles. <laughs> Knock on wood. So all the children from the village are forced into labor, which is strange because the men and women would obviously be much stronger and more valuable, but what do I know? Maybe they work for less. And where exactly do they take these children? We are torture! Yes, Conan, you will be spending the rest of your life pushing this wheel! Years and years of torturous mayhem will go by as you'll be asking yourself, why am I pushing this wheel? You will never get an answer to this question, however, it does seem that your muscles will spontaneously quadruple in size. All from pushing this relatively pointless, but also very lovely, wheel! So Conan grows big and strong as he literally spends several decades pushing this damn thing. Do you think he enjoys it by now? I mean, good lord, a lifetime of doing nothing but working out? What does that do to a guy? It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is, you know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym, I'm getting the feeling of coming at home, I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, so I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> good for you. As the rest of the wheel pushers seem to disappear, somebody finally comes to get it. No, no, I said give the children candy! Not have them push a gigantic wheel in a circle continually for the rest of their lives? How... how did you even hear that? 
Sit here. Push wheel. Sit here. Push wheel. Look, all I understand is wheels. Please, do you have a wheel? May I push it? So Conan, I suppose, is bought and forced into fighting for money. And I guess all that wheel pushing paid off because even though he's never had any combat training, he's apparently a really good fighter and keeps winning event after event. He was taken to the East. A great prize. Language and writing were made available. Hmm, how to speak with an Austrian accent. This scroll is very informative. But over time, Conan becomes angrier and angrier, and I guess his master is afraid that he might have created a monster. Conan! What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear a lamentation of their women. That is good! That is good! Very good, Conan! You get a gold star! Thank you, sir. May I have a wheel now? We shut up about the wheel! So his master sets him free to wander aimlessly as he comes across some sort of burial site. He's in the kingdom of the crystal skull. Crumb. Ah yes, Crumb. Crumb, I suppose, is a warrior god who helped discover the invention of steel. And is also the winner of the God with the Stupidest Name competition. So after he grave robs beloved Crumb, he comes across a woman in the middle of the hills, as it appears she may have some information on the man who killed his family. Wonder would crush the snakes of the earth. Snakes? Did you say snakes? Why did it have to be snakes? What is it you seek? A symbol. Bound on a shield. Two snakes coming together. Coming in the gym, I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm okay, getting the feeling knock it of off. coming. But in order to find the treacherous villain, he needs some directions. Unfortunately, she tells him that there's a horrible price to pay. Bonking the living shit out of her. Oh, the horror! Cross roads of the world, you will find what you want. Wow, how come more men don't ask for directions? This is wonderful! <laughs> No, she's pulling me into Avatar. The visuals will be stunning, but this story will be absolute bullshit. Okay. So after that, he comes across a thief named Subatai, who says he can help him find James Earl Jones by traveling across the land. Behold, we have reached Jerusalem! Wait, what? So they go into a few towns, get drunk, he punches a camel, that's nice. And they even come across another thief, who joins them on their quest. Ooh, I'd like to ask her for directions. They're unfortunately captured, though, by King Osric, played by Max von Sydow. He, I suppose, has a task for them. He promises them riches if they can bring back his daughter who's been brainwashed by James Earl Jones. She follows him as a slave, seeking for the truth of her soul, as if I could not give it to her. The power of Crumb compels her! Conan dresses up in his silliest outfits and decides to fight Jones alone. He rides off into the wilderness and sets camp in some sort of Stonehenge ripoff. What? <laughs> what? The horses just died with them? How the hell is that possible? Don't worry, Wilbur. We'll catch those bad guys. What? Well, you dead? Oh, okay. I'll just stand here until starvation. So it turns out James Earl Jones is the head of a brainwashing cult, which is pretty much like Burning Man if everybody dressed up like Tylenol. But Conan is spotted and brought before our villain. Steel isn't strong, boy. Flesh is stronger. Look around you. There, on the rocks, a beautiful girl. Come to me, my child. His power. Crucify him. Too Jewish. Forgive them, Crumb. They know not what they do. 
No, to make things worse, he's nailed up right next to Eric Idle. Always look on the light side of life. But the other two thieves come to save him as they take him to a wizard who will try to bring him back to life. And wouldn't you know it, he's played by Mako. So he gives him a Mako over, as apparently this is supposed to bring him back to life somehow. Alright, what's an eight letter word for an uncouth person in the Dark Ages? Begins with B. Anybody? Anybody, but begins with B. So Arnold Saduko seems to work as Conan is brought back to life. But there's still the business of getting the king's daughter back, as they try to break into the castle and get her out. Bye bye boys! Have fun storming the castle! They dress up in their commando makeup that still doesn't seem to camouflage anything, as they sneak into the palace where some sort of strange orgy is going on. Well, that's just silly. Um, does he do this often? Is Thursday night just... snake night? Oh well, no time to question logic now! We've got a princess to save! They take her away from the palace as James Earl Jones finally comes to his senses. Guys, I told you to watch the place Well, I was a snake! Can't a guy just be a snake for five minutes without something going wrong? So he gets out his bow and, I'm totally serious here, he fires a snake at them. Ah! You know, guy, I can see you have sort of a snake motif going on here, but you don't have to use it for everything. Just use a friggin' arrow. I mean, what, do you brush your teeth with snakes, comb your hair with snakes? God help us if he actually has a snake condom, that'd just be insane. So the woman sadly dies as the rest of them get ready for the big battle. They do this by setting up the Flintstone equivalent of Home Alone traps. Crom, I've never prayed to you before. All that matters is that two stood against many. That's what's important. Baba pleases you, Crom. Yeah, uh, bad news, I'm afraid. Your prayer accidentally got intercepted by R. Crumb, the perverted cartoonist. I was sexually attracted to Bugs Bunny, and I, I cut out this Bugs Bunny off the cover of a comic book and carried it around with me. So grant me one request. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then to hell with you. <laughs> wow, that's like... The most backhanded prayer I ever heard in my life. Give me what I want, and if not, fuck you. Do you think you'll just pray for everything like that from now on? Oh, Crumb, please let my Happy Meal contain either Alvin, Simon, or Theodore from the Alvin and the Chipmunks Collector series. But do not put in any chipettes. I do not like the chipettes. God help you if there's any chipettes in there! If there is a chipette, then to hell with you! So with his spear magic helmet, he fights off all the bad guys along with his friends. Gah! Fell for the oldest trick in the book! Hitting a helmet, which I thought was you, triggering a rock, activating a spear that stabbed me in the chest! Damn, you're good! He even gets help from beyond the grave, apparently. Do you want to live forever? And by forever, I mean a brief cameo in the sequel. So he wins the battle as all the bad guys flee back to the palace. They snap the princess to her senses as she agrees to show Conan how to sneak into the fortress and finally kill James Earl Jones. Burn you the way to paradise! Child, you have come to me, my son, who gave you the will to live. What will your world be without me? My 
my son. Well, gee, when you put it like that, fuck you! <laughs> Ow, 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 ow. So I guess this somehow breaks the spell they're all under. I didn't even know they were under a spell. As Conan burns down the palace and builds up some hype for the sequel. In time, he became a king by his own hand. This story shall also be told. Very poorly in Conan the Destroyer! From the director who brought you such classics as Red Sonja and Dr. Doolittle comes his most epic of unimpressively bland masterpieces, Conan the Destroyer. It sucks balls. Let's watch it. Between the years when the ocean... See that? So we start off with Conan as he's apparently replaced Subatai with a very obnoxious comedy relief. I think we made the merchant angry. But we didn't steal everything he had. <laughs> they got me because Rob Schneider was off making worse movies. <laughs> but they're suddenly surrounded by a ton of soldiers who attack him with nuts and sticks. I, I don't think that's gonna work, guys. Please get in our nets. We'll be your friends. Do you know who I am? Queen Taramis. What do you want? I need your help. That's why I sent my men to attack you. I'm just saying hello. You have nothing that I want. Look at the shrine. Show me the desire in your deepest heart. Malaria. Malaria? Her name was Malaria all this time? Actually, it's Valeria. And if Conan goes with the queen, she can help bring her back to life. So, of course, he agrees. Oh, look, he even comes across another camel, like in the first film. I'm sorry about what happened the last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how come I get the feeling that the name of the next film is going to be Conan, the Camel Puncher? We will drink to Dagos. The dreaming god. The god of nonchalantness. Alright, there's a lot of story they get out here, so listen closely. It is written in the scrolls of Skellis that a woman child born with a certain mark must make a perilous journey. It is her destiny. Sounds like a pretty stupid destiny. My niece, Jenna, has such a mark. There is a key she must find. A key only she can touch. Where is it? In a castle. Guard it. By a wizard. What does this key unlock? A jeweled horn. Only she can procure it. So you want me to fulfill the unknown destiny of a scroll I never read by going to a castle I can't find to lead a girl I never met to go up against a magic I cannot fathom and find a treasure I never heard of? Yep. Okay. So before they head out on their quest, the queen gives her captain of the guards some specific orders. What I do need you for is to see that this dear child is returned safely to the palace. Both the treasure and her virginity intact. I can definitely protect one of those. Well, she must be a virgin when she's returned to me, so she can be properly sacrificed. Yes, make sure absolutely nothing happens to her so I can kill her. Speaking of which, how come gods always want virgins? Wouldn't sluts be more accepted? They put out more and they just have a better understanding of the human body. It's pleasurably logical. But I digress. They set out on their quest and go through several villages to get to the castle. On their way, they come across Mako from the last movie and Mary Day! Hey, I didn't know she was in this movie. That kicks ass! And ironically, the situation suggests she's in view to a kill. Save her! Thieves should be hanged. So, how come she has a horse tail on her ass? Is that just the style then? Look at that, Abu! It's not every day you see a horse with two rear ends! So Mede wants to join them for saving her life. The captain tries to shoo her away, but it doesn't seem to work. 
Northeast looks arousing. I'd better join them. I swear that if Conan will let me ride with him, I will give my life for him. We shall see. So she joins their team as they ride to the castle they were looking for. Um, water is not usually the most stable spot to build a castle. I mean, seriously, who builds their castle in the middle of a swamp? Well, the king said it was daft to build a castle in the swamp, but I built it all the same, just to show them. They sank into the swamp. We then cut to the wizard who owns the castle. Hey, hey it's the Burger King's mutilated brother, Daniel. So they decide to rest for the night while the evil wizard transforms himself into a hideous beast. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. So he captures Jenna and holds her in a room made out of tin foil. The others break into the castle and try to get her back. My god, the fabulous baseball diamond! Golly, you're the most thematic wizard I've ever met. How long did it take you to plan all this? Do you do birthday party? So the... Where wizard tries to attack Conan as his friends watch helplessly. But Conan discovers he has to destroy the mirrors in order to destroy the wizard. Which is a little strange. I mean, if you're the wizard, why would you want your weakness surrounding the room? It's like Superman decorating his fortress of solitude with kryptonite curtains. I don't need any meals. I know I'm perfect. <laughs> Boy, he's taking that sword through his chest pretty well, isn't he? I mean, I would scream or something, but he keeps all his pain inside, and I respect that. Wait a minute! They could crash through the door the whole time? Why didn't they just do that before? Were they just looking for the doorbell to be polite? So as the journey continues, we find that the niece has quite the attraction to Conan, as she tries to see if she can get some dating tips from Mayday here, because she really looks like a person who's into girly talk. I didn't know women could be warriors. Who said I was a woman? All my tribe are warriors. How do you attract a man? I spear him, gut him, then wear him. What I mean is, suppose you set your heart on somebody. Take him! and take him. Like that? I often use my club to bash him on the head and drag him to my cave by his hair. But that's so yesterday, girlfriend. But Jenna finds she needs someone more sophisticated to talk about sex with. In order for, for a man to really know a woman and, and for her to know him, they have to, uh, to join. Join? He has to take his, his, uh, uh, and grab her by the, uh, there you are. Join. I mean, how do you think flowers grow? The level of sexual insight this guy has is just mind-blowing, isn't it? Hell, I'd love to see this guy on some sort of sex talk show. Yeah, hi. Um, I find I have trouble getting an erection around nighttime. Uh, what would you suggest for that? No, I mean, you know, with the, the, the things and the guys over here, women's over here, and the... And, and the joining, and uh, with the big, and the, the ooh, and the, uh, and the, the, you know, flowers. So they find castle number two and locate the treasure the queen was talking about. But they're greeted by some unpleasant company on their way out. We are the keepers of the horn. Then you know what will happen if the horn is placed back in the forehead of Dagoth. The god will live again. No one is able to control him. Enough talk. <laughs> Low blow guy, Conan the Crotch Stabber. <laughs> so they fight their way through and hide behind some sort of magic door. The pubic beard here, it turns out, is also a wizard, as he uses his powers to open the door up. <laughs> Wait a minute, did his magic just make a dinging sound? <laughs> Oh man, he must have been the laughing stock at Hogwarts, don't you think? My magic produces lightning! My magic produces fire! My 
my magic goes. Luckily, Mako uses his own magic to show the wizard the most frightening image he can conjure up. So the captain gives our heroes the slip as he rides off with Jenna. Where are the others? They're coming, don't worry, go. Oh, okay, thank God I'm an idiot. So they arrive at the castle as our heroes are not far behind. Today is your birthday. All of Shadazar is celebrating. Drink. To death. I mean killing you. I mean life. I mean killing you. But the fearsome five break into the castle where they come across the captain, who plans to stop them from thwarting Jenna's sacrifice. So what's my birthday gift? Is it a pony? Is it a dagger and a pony? Is it you stabbing me in the throat so you can resurrect a god in order to control him and hopefully rule the world? And a pony? Save the girl! Oh yeah, I guess we have been standing here the whole time. I was confused because I thought there was an easily breakable piece of glass in front of us. See, that's the only thing that can hold us back. So because she's not sacrificed, the statue is instead transformed into... Okay, I think James Earl Jones' snake scene just got out silly. <laughs> It looks like one of those Rankin Bass stop motion figures if it was shit out by Swamp Thing. But our comic weasel is nice enough to throw a dagger into his eye. Boy, I feel a little weird saying this, but Conan is literally fighting a one-eyed, one-horned, giant purple people eater. And you know what? It sure looks strange to me. So Conan kills the creature as he delivers the final blow. And if you can believe it, Weasel Man here actually tries to take credit for the victory. Doosh. Zula. What is that? I need a captain of the guards. I see no reason why a woman wouldn't do as well as a man. You shall be called Punky Brewster, the Brave. Will the world's greatest wizard come forward, please? Not you, I said the world's greatest wizard. Just kidding. One cannot rule without wisdom. Rule Shadizar with me. I need a royal cherry popper, and you more than qualify. I will have my own kingdom, my own queen. I will own the beautiful land of California. California. Shh. So Conan rides off to find his own kingdom, and thus we get an ending pretty much identical to the first one. Till at last, he found his own kingdom and wore his crown upon a troubled brow. story that I will not tell because I am dead Schwarzenegger's in California and this franchise is non-existent. So those are the Conan movies. How do they measure up? Well, the second one is just crap. Once in a while there's something interesting, but for the most part it's just boring. The first one, however, I gotta admit it's sort of a guilty pleasure for me. I mean, again, it's stupid, but it's so epically stupid. The characters are memorable, the cinematography is great, and the music is some of the best I've ever heard in them. It's kind of hard not to enjoy it. Now granted, I've never read the original stories, and from what I hear, the movie doesn't do them any justice. But I still like the first one, for its corniness, for its grand scale, and for its over-the-top execution. Is it bad? Sure, but it's a very enjoyable kind of bad. And if you're an Arnold fan, you'll definitely check it out. But how will Conan match up against the armies of darkness, Satan himself in the end of days? That is another story. I'm betting he wins. <laughs>